Atletico Madrid winning La Liga ahead of Real Madrid and Barcelona is unsurpassed as a domestic achievement in the modern game. You think about the budgets that these three teams have in relation to each other, and Real and Barca are on another level entirely. Diego Simeone, in the players that he has, has forged a unit capable of disrupting probably the best two teams in the world. And he did so with much the same personnel that he had when he took over. One key addition though was Diego Costa. Well, if you go back, you know, 30 years even, there's Atletico Madrid have produced so many world-class strikers, you know, Hugo Sanchez, Christian Vieri, Radamel Falcao, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, you know, Sergio Aguero. Well, all of a sudden, that legacy of the classic Atletico striker uh, looked to be a little bit unfulfilled. But Diego Costa stepped up magnificently, and he made the difference in many games for Atletico last season as they, as they won the league title. Sí, no, este, ha tenido ya Diego Costa hasta hace muchos años en el Atlético y, y bueno, este año pudo explotar y, y, y tuvo tener, pudo tener el rendimiento que él esperaba. Diego Costa, I think is, I would think is the, would be the, the, the top of the of the iceberg for Atlético Madrid. Uh, even in a time when when he didn't score, I think it was for three months in 2014, is the way he plays, the way the way he he works so hard for the team, and he makes. Available uh, sometimes Villa, sometimes Turan, sometimes uh, Coque, because of his movements, because the way he, well, I think literally, literally sometimes fights against um, the centre backs, allows other players to to find spaces or to find uh, superiority in other areas. Uh, but it's the determination he has. Uh, I think it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, I think it's impossible to overestimate the impact that Diego Costa had on Atletico's season. Yes, he missed most of the final game against Barcelona when they won La Liga. He missed most of the final in the Champions League as well against Real Madrid. But when you look at the season as a whole, he had such an incredible impact. He gave them a bit of direction in the forward line, he had the power up front, he had the goals. He just transformed them from a side who could challenge Barcelona and Real Madrid into a side that could beat them. And they beat them both over the season and, of course, to win that title on the final day of the season was magnificent, but they wouldn't have done that without Diego Costa. Atletico Madrid, obviously, is, is the reflection of his manager, but Diego Costa's performances and goals has been uh, terrific for Atletico Madrid. Diego Costa is a fantastic player. He has a enormous potential, young, with a difficult for a defensive difficult to find. Eh, tiene que mejorar en algunos aspectos, sin duda. Y si él quiere mejorar, va a ser de los mejores delanteros del mundo por los últimos años, por los próximos años. Sí, ha tenido una, una temporada excepcional. El Cholo ha sabido sacar lo mejor, mejor de él en esta temporada. Y, y, y nada, ha sido muy, muy efectivo. Ha sido importantísimo para que el Atlético esté en el lugar donde está este año. Pero tiene un jugador que no tenía. Eh, un 9 picador, posiblemente algo similar a lo que era Fernando Torres en su inicio. Eh, Costa posiblemente siendo mucho más profundo, mucho eh, más dinámico en su verticalidad, sin pelota. A number of the Spanish forwards were struggling for form heading into the World Cup, so it was a no-brainer for Vicente del Bosque to get Diego Costa in. He was well familiar with a lot of the Atletico Madrid number, obviously from his time at club level, and it seemed a sure fit that Costa would lead the line for Spain in Brazil as he defended the World Cup trophy. Obviously he had injury problems which didn't help, but I think it was 120 minutes without an effort on goal or an assist. You know, given the controversy around his choice to play for Spain over Brazil, he was just the, the ultimate flop. I think it was a kind of natural reaction in a way that, that Brazilian fans were booing Diego Costa, particularly in Salvador in the first game against the Netherlands. But if you think back, there wasn't an awful lot of attention around the player until he chose Spain ahead of Brazil. Um, obviously, he'd made his debut with Brazil against Italy. But other than that, there wasn't an awful lot of attention around him. And so it was only his decision to choose Spain that really brought the entire question mark over whether he would play for Brazil at the World Cup into focus. Having made Diego Costa his number one transfer target, 
Jose Mourinho has finally got his man. They didn't tear up any trees with the way they played their football last season. It was a very, very simple strategy that they employed. You know, they soaked up some pressure and then they hit teams on the break. And this is something that's not going to be lost on Jose Mourinho because at the top of that system was Diego Costa. And anybody that could feed the ball into Costa and then get beyond him and make runs, well, then Atletico always had a chance of a goal. Chelsea are set up in quite a similar way. And with his physicality and with his work rate, he'll give something to Chelsea and something to Mourinho that they didn't have last season with Torres and Edu. He really based his side on that, that presence up front who could hold the ball up, who could muscle up against defenders, who could score goals as well. And I think he'll try that again. I think that's his, his formula that he likes to work with. And the way that Costa played for Atleti was very similar. I think they really missed him in the latter stages of that Champions League final when they could have done with him taking a little bit more pressure off them. I think that was their ultimate undoing. There's no reason why he can't lead Chelsea into a, a new kind of victorious era. Diego Costa is exactly the kind of striker that I can see performing exceptionally well at Chelsea because of the way he plays the game. He's a hard-working player, he scores goals, he plays for the side. So he's the type of player that Mourinho uh, can work with and um, it'd be a, a very good sign. I think Chelsea need a, a good centre forward. They were missing one last year. And with Fabregas signing for Chelsea as well, I think Chelsea are going to be a very strong contender next season. But I think last year, if they had a, a striker that was going to score 20 goals or more, then they may have won the league. They were very close to it until the last one or two games. So with Costa, I think he'd be a, a very good signing for Chelsea and, and good to see in the Premier League. The question for me is, he's going to be capable of, of, of keeping this rate of scoring uh, next season? Uh, because I think this could be the best season, season we've seen uh, for him playing. Uh, but like I said, for me, it's not just the goals, it's, it's also uh, the work he has for, for the team. It's been, it's been fantastic.